So I'll get started. We're here to talk about customary off-the-shelf software. So how you apply DevOps concepts to automate and create immutable infrastructures around your purchased applications, things like App Dynamics, Oracle um, applications, or SAP e, uh, ERP. Right. Uh, my name is Phil Taylor. I'm the VP of Engineering at IGNW. Previously, I was the CTO of Brightwork, a serverless cloud company. Um, I've spent 20 years in the industry. I think my slides are a little out of date, but I've done everything from software engineering to infrastructure, uh, as well as picking up DevOps and CICD pipelines and things like this along the way. You might be happy with where you're at, but I guarantee your team's not. If this is your world on screen, you've got team members that are probably leaving for other companies that are doing things more efficiently. And they have started to adopt Agile and DevOps practices all the way across their organization. There's business drivers, uh, reasons to do this, increased time to market, right? Better infrastructure utilization, faster mean time to recovery, uh, reduced fail rollbacks and failures, and increased application availability and performance. This is all applies to your package software, right? When you can re repeatedly and reliably deliver software. Uh, just to get on the same page with what DevOps is, we believe it's a combination of cultural change and technological change, but most importantly, it's strong transparency and feedback loops, right? And on the technology side, that gets us really stuck around the CI/CD process. But what you do need is a change in culture, tooling, and a real focus on automation within your organization. And there's lots of tools, and most teams get focused just on the tooling aspect of this. So don't forget the other two areas. So if you ask Buzz Lightyear, that means pipelines everywhere, right? CICD sits at the center of our world technologically, and most of us in here are engineers. Um, so we've got to think about how we build pipelines for COTS-based software as well as the custom software. And really, they're, they're not that different. They're not as different as you might think. Most pipelines look like this. Developers are checking in code, committing it, going through some sort of CI process that's much faster and smaller than the full CD process. Uh, going through some level of unit tests with COTS-based software, you might think about unit tests more like smoke tests, just ensuring that if I make a config change, it can be applied. So these are some of the problems with COTS-based software is how do I do this? How do I actually automate it? Um, the biggest problem is probably applying configuration or restoring databases and applying schema changes, right? So really uh, might require a software engineering discipline on your team that might have traditionally been infrastructure. The next problem you need to think about is how are your integrations built? What technologies does the package software support? Does it have APIs? Can it be containerized? Where will it run? Can it run in the cloud? Is it supported in the cloud? Um, you need to think about all those different aspects of it and then attack the processes that your teams have built internally, right? So do we build those in a microservices batch-based way? I'm sorry, a monolithic batch-based way. Can we move it to a microservice that can also be aligned and deployed quicker and in smaller units that match our DevOps strategy? Have we aligned our release strategy to match our vendor strategy, right? Maybe we need to do releases on our internal components, but those are going to be affected by the release schedule of the software provider. So you need to make sure you're aligning those schedules and that you're in sync. Your branching strategy. So this is extremely important in custom software development. It's just as important as you move your packaged applications to more of an infrastructure as code model and you're deploying uh, on that same schedule. Branch, your branching strategy will impact your velocity and ability to make those changes. And then the most key important thing is to have a governance model. Not to say just because it's packaged that you can do a different process. You know, try and eliminate the need for people to be on machines. Scan the, the software for vulnerabilities. Uh, make sure you're still abiding by your contracts and SLAs. And then move into concepts if the software can be containerized and supported by the vendor. Even if it's not, maybe you're on the cutting edge. Other platform technologies will help you in this journey. So start aggregating services in the way that we would on other platforms, pushing to centralized monitoring and other solutions like that. It's an example of a CI pipeline for Docker. So you're kind of building it, publishing it, and then finally publishing that software out to uh, a repository where the rest of the pipeline can access it. So on the CD side of things, you may never get to box five with this, but making these other changes will help incrementally. You'll get a lot of value in the process. Some level of automated, uh, actually automated environment provisioning, probably always a must. Automated acceptance testing, you'll get to some level of that regression performance testing as well. But don't throw out some of the basic principles of DevOps as you're doing this, as you start to make concessions. Remember that if your teams aren't talking, you're going to struggle to get the software to talk together as well. So if you're still doing it in a siloed fashion, you're not doing it in the DevOps way. We had a recent project where we did this successfully for a customer that was managing Jira and Confluence on-prem. They had no uh, technical expertise on staff anymore and how that was built. And they asked us to lift and shift to the cloud. We said we wouldn't lift and shift it, we'd rebuild it, and we'd apply these concepts to it. So now, fast forward, we used Hacker to build up the base images for their AMIs, and we used Terraform to orchestrate that. They can build an offline environment to test plugin upgrades in 15 minutes from production data with production plugin configurations. 
that's it. If you have questions, come see me. We're hosting a happy hour this evening. Come by our booth. Thanks.